Hey, what's up guys, it's Nick2. After testing a crazy amount of different versions of Meteor builds, I think I've landed on what is probably the overall most versatile version of a Meteor build and what I personally believe to be the best Meteor build this season. As you can see in the gameplay, Meteor's previous problem was boss damage and I've done my absolute best to kind of remedy this problem. When you're playing by yourself, bosses just absolutely get nuked. You're not gonna like instantly kill a four man Durial like a Blizzard build would, if you want to see that blizzard build check the link down in the description but for most content this build is going to absolutely annihilate i've actually made two versions of it that you guys can use one of them is more of like a speed running version for just flying through vaults and the other one is more just really easy to set up for the majority of you guys and it's just going to perform very well with crazy survivability and just a ton of raw damage output i've gone through a tremendous amount of trial and error with this build for whatever reason i've probably spent more time working on this build than almost any other build in the game just because I really wanted Meteor to be really good, and the skill inherently is kind of just weak, so it was really hard to get it to a point to where I'm like happy with it, I'm satisfied, but I think I've landed there, and I'm really excited to show you guys the final product here. Before I get into the video, I want to show you guys something that everybody needs in their life, and that is a financial app like today's sponsor, Hiatus, to help you better take control of your financial life. Using my link, you can enter a giveaway for a chance to win up to $2,000. More on that later, though. There's a ton of stuff that Hiatus can help you guys out with, but some of the most helpful things include being able to track and manage all of your subscriptions in just one place, so you don't have to try and remember every single thing that you're subscribed to, and you can easily cancel your subscriptions with just one press of a button within the app. Hiatus can also help negotiate and lower your monthly bills and even set up custom budgets based on your spending habits. Hiatus also has a ton of in-house financial experts to help you approach all of your financial needs. I highly recommend you guys try out Hiatus as it's helped me to stay on top of my spending a ton. And if you use my link in the description and sign up for a premium account, you'll be entered into a giveaway for a chance to win up to $2,000 if we get enough people to sign up. So make sure to use the link in the description and take control of your finances today. Real quickly, I want to explain how the build works, as I have tried a ton of different versions of it, and like I said, I think this is overall the best one, and quickly mention some of the other versions that exist out there. You guys have probably seen people mixing Fireball with Meteor. The reason that I'm not doing this is because I don't think that it is worth it. If you want to play Fireball, that is overall a better build than just building full into Fireball. The reason for this is that Meteor just isn't as good of a skill as Fireball, and Fireball is spammable. You can very easily build into it. The reason I'm not doing a Fireball build, even though it may be stronger than just building into Meteor, is because Meteor is a new thing. It's really cool, and I imagine a lot of you guys want to play with it, right? When you build into Fireball but try to incorporate Meteor, you're going to end up taking away a lot of damage from Fireball itself by putting on a lot of Meteor Legendaries, trying to put ranks into Meteor and scale it up, when you would just be better off playing full Fireball, so it kind of just feels counterintuitive. I wanted to make a build where Meteor is kind of the main source of damage, having it feel really good to press Meteor every time that you do, while also having enough damage to nuke bosses and clear maps very efficiently while feeling very cozy. The other version of the build is playing Full Meteor, no Firewall, building full cooldown reduction, which is heavily reliant on a 6 second Coronet, cooldown reduction on every single piece of gear, max rolled, and then using the Ice Blades enchant, so you can on average get your Meteor to about a 2.5 second cooldown. I tried this build to no end, I really wanted it to work, and honestly it just feels like crap to play because you're relying on Meteor as your only source of damage and your only source of burn application. When this happens, you'll end up with a ton of enemies around you that aren't burning, the meteors take a second to fall down, it just, it just really doesn't feel good. And sometimes if your meteor doesn't one-shot, doesn't crit or something, well it should crit almost all the time with this version, but... Sometimes you just want one-shot enemies, right? The clear speed ends up just not really feeling good. Meteor being your only source of burn application means that you only have one way of proccing X-Falls, and X-Falls actually hard carries this build. The second that you notice that X-Falls does a crazy amount of damage and kind of carries the build, that's when you kind of start swapping the build up and building full around X-Falls while having Meteor there to kind of deal instant guaranteed burst damage when you need it. As you can see in this clip here, X-Falls does almost, I think, like 7 million damage in one hit on Durial, and this just happens all the time. When you're only using Meteor and not using Firewall, you're not proccing X-Falls nearly as often, and enemies are constantly straggling behind you, you're not able to hit everything with one Meteor cast. It's honestly just really miserable. So the way that I have it set up is I'm using Firewall and Meteor. Firewall itself doesn't really do that much damage. You can make it do some damage, and it kind of does, but the main reason that Firewall is there is to apply burn to everything around you, which is permanently going to heal you, damage reduction, but it also procs X-Falls like crazy. 
Firewall also has the added benefit of having a pretty decently high lucky hit chance, which will then even spawn meteors every once in a while. I'm sure you guys have seen the infinite chain reaction thing that you can do on target dummies. It's kind of only relevant against target dummies, but sometimes when you're in like big rooms, you can throw down a firewall, which then procs a meteor, throw down a meteor, which then procs a firewall, and then the enchants themselves will start procking off of each other, and that ends up being a pretty nice combination. But basically with this build, I'm trying to just scale up X-Fall's damage as much as humanly possible while having a lot of damage for Meteor to basically just one-shot elites and do some pretty good boss damage. And with this mix of building both of them, you're kind of just putting firewalls behind you and everything just blows up to X-Falls. And then anytime you see an elite, you can pretty much just one-shot them with Meteor and constantly spam your Meteors for really high damage output. My personal favorite way to play with this build, which is overall a little bit faster, but is going to be slower for killing bosses, is using the Teleport Enchant, which you guys have probably seen me do in my Ball Lightning video last season. I use a Teleport Enchant with boots that attacks reduce evade cooldown. I pair that with Raiment, and I pretty much am just spamming Teleport constantly, and any time that I pop into enemies because I have a Firewall Enchant and Teleport has such a high lucky hit chance, it, there's a very high likelihood that I spawn a Firewall on them, and then I just keep blasting through the map, dropping meteors on enemies that get sucked and stunned together, and then X-Falls will proc and kind of one-shot stuff. That's my favorite way to play with the build, and I think most people will prefer this more relaxed firewall meteor version of the build, but if you want to speedrun and just fly through maps, uh, definitely check out the teleport version, which I'll have a link to down in the description. When it comes to the skills that we're using, teleport obviously, flame shield for the immunity, and also it gives you some unstoppable Ice Blades to give you a Talrasha stack for d dealing ice damage, and then I have Lightning Spear. After the Lightning Spear buffs, I absolutely love this skill. You can use Frost Nova instead, but Frost Nova does not deal frost damage, so you can't replace Ice Blades, unfortunately, so it's kind of like Lightning Spear or Frost Nova. Lightning Spear, the benefit is that it applies vulnerable, like pretty much guarantee anytime that it crits, and we have very high crit chance with this build, and it also will stun enemies, and it is crazy consistent at doing this. It's really nice to just fly through the map, having a lightning spear there to help you for guaranteed vulnerable, and stunning stuff, which is a massive survivability increase for us. But if you prefer Frost Nova, uh, feel free to use that instead. It is just a bit of a longer cooldown. Then we have Firewall and Meteor. Again, Firewall is just to apply burn, and it procs X-Falls and can proc Meteor enchants, it does do decent damage, but it's not going to like burst down an elite or anything. And the majority of your damage is with Meteor and with X-Falls. Getting into the skill tree here, just two points randomly because we have to fill it out. And then we go into Elemental Dominance for 9% increased damage for our uh, meat Mastery skills, which is Meteor and Firewall. And then we go one point to Flame Shield. You could take points out of Teleport and go into uh, Enhanced Flame Shield and Shimmering or Mystical if you prefer. I like having the cooldown reduction on my Teleport though. I max out Glass Cannon for more damage, and Elemental Attunement has a pretty good chance of resetting um, either Teleport or Flame Shield, which can be pretty nice. It's only one point, so that's easy. Precision Magic for Lucky Hit Chance, because our Enchants are Lucky Hit based, but also X-Falls, a huge portion of our damage, is Lucky Hit based, so we do want to scale our Lucky Hit. Ice Blades, you could put one extra point to reduce the cooldown of it. Uh, it's very nice for applying Vulnerable to bosses, but Lightning Spirit will also do that for you. And then I go into the Stun, which is really nice for just overall survivability. Stunning stuff is pretty cool. And then we go into Mana Shield and Protection. Again, when you play a full Meteor build, you also don't have Mana Shield because you're not spending any mana, so you feel really squishy. Then I max out Meteor and I go into the Immobilize, so it does more damage with Devouring Blaze, but if you hate how slow the Meteors are dropping, just swap it to Mage's Meteor. I kind of prefer that most of the time, to be honest, but for the gameplay, I like to use Devouring Blaze just so you guys can see some bigger numbers with Meteor. It'll do 18% more damage. Then you go into Firewall. You could opt to take all these points out because a lot of your damage is not Firewall at all. Firewall is kind of there just as a proc or something to use to proc stuff, so the damage of Firewall is pretty useless, but you definitely want mages so that enemies continue to burn, so that while they're burning they could proc more Firewalls, but they also, or X-Falls, Firewalls, Meteors, etc., but they also could heal you with Warmth, which is massive. With these extra four points, if you didn't want to put them into Firewall, you could easily just build into like Icy Veil for more duration, you could go into a uh, cooldown reduction, oh no, leveling up Lightning Spirit doesn't give you cooldown reduction, damn, that's unfortunate. Uh, probably just go into like, I don't know, Ranks to Flame Shield for cooldown reduction. Maybe you do Crippling Flames for a higher likelihood to immobilize enemies, because if you immobilize them and then you get an X-Falls proc, it'll do a bit more damage. I don't know, there's not really a, anywhere else to put these points. Uh, a lot of people play with Inferno. It's just way too long of a cooldown to suck all the enemies inward, and you do not need the mana cost reduction, because mana really isn't that big of a deal with this build at all. 
When it comes to the pet, you want to go with Flash of Adrenaline, Tactical, Duration, and Genesis for a permanent 50% damage increase. Until you get Genesis, you can supplement with Fortify Support for just a bit more damage reduction. Whenever you're full fortified, you'll have 15% DR. There isn't much else that you could really put on the Flash of Adrenaline side. You could swap to Safeguard Support instead, and then on the Tempest, you want to have Breaking Support for just more uh, vulnerable redundancy, particularly for bosses. Evernight, if possible, just to give you ranks to Meteor, but also gives you ranks to all your other skills, so you get some cooldown reduction there, which is pretty nice. And then if you want to do more damage to bosses, you could swap Safeguard out to um, wherever the efficiency support is for additional crit chance, but you don't really need it. And if I'm playing the Teleport version of the build, I take off uh, Breaking Support and I put on Resource Support because I end up running out of mana with the Teleport version of the build. And the reason for that is that with this version of the build, I'm using Tabalt's Will because this is going to give damage to everything, including X-Falls, Meteor, Firewall, etc. This gives us a blanket damage increase where I used to use Ranks to Meteor. When I'm playing the Teleport version of the build, I no longer use Tabalt because I like to use Raiment. I'm not using Raiment with the normal version of the build because Tabalt is just so insane for giving you overall damage and you just permanently get 50 resource all the time, so you literally never run out of mana. Without Tabalt, it's extremely hard to get really like fast boss kills because you want to be scaling the damage of your X-Falls and it's just 40% increased damage. For the rest of our unique, something that's particularly worth noting is I'm using Esu's Heirloom here, which gives you crit chance based on your movement speed. If you have enough cooldown reduction, which is pretty easy to get, you can permanently have the uptime of the 75% movement speed for 3 seconds after evading. As you can see, I get 12% crit chance right now with my current movement speed. When I evade, I get 32% crit chance. And because my cooldown reduction is low enough, I can pretty much spam the evade here. So I always have the um, crit chance active, as well as movement speed cap. Another thing that's helpful about this, constantly being able to evade, is that Firewall is a pretty annoying animation. So if you uh, Firewall and then evade immediately, you animation cancel, which can be pretty nice. But if you use the Juggernaut aspect, you double the cooldown on your evade, so then you're not able to really utilize this. So you want to use Disobedience with this version of the build using Esu's Heirloom. And then you have to get armor capped by putting armor on your chest plus your amulet. Currently, I'm not armor capped, but if I were to swap to this amulet here and then I were to get Disobedience stacked up, I'll just show you guys this real quick here. I am nearly armor capped, I'm like 200 armor off. If you had a perfect armor roll on your amulet here and on your chest, you would be armor capped. I've been playing without armor cap and it's perfectly fine, but sometimes you will die to like melee hits if you don't have the armor on your amulet. So it's definitely worth noting that if you want to take full advantage of the crit chance that you get from Esu's and it basically giving you permanent movement speed cap, you definitely want to be playing with disobedience. But if you don't like the cumbersome playstyle of that, you're fine with just losing a bit of damage, feel free to just use Juggernaut instead. For the rest of our legendaries, obviously we want X-Falls to get this off of Durial because it's just a crazy amount of damage. And that's, this is the reason that we scale our lucky hit. And then we want Talrashas for just permanent 45% damage increase. We do lightning damage with teleport and lightning spear. We do fire damage, obviously. And then uh, our ice damage is, is with ice blades. When it comes to the rest of the damage legendaries, my philosophy was trying to scale up X-Falls as much as possible. But also I wanted Meteor to get to a point to where you could one-shot elites. So it feels really good to press Meteor. This is a Meteor build after all. So we want Meteor to feel really good. You, you kind of just have to crutch on X-Falls because it is so strong though. Because of this, I like to put Storm Swell on the Amulet, which is going to increase the damage of everything. It does require the enemies being vulnerable, but more often than not, if you're fighting an Elite that has a lot of HP, you'll make them vulnerable via Lightning Spear, breaking support on your pet, or with Ice Blades. Mainly using this for bosses and high health Elites. Then you want to have Conceited, which is just damage to everything. And then our last two Legendaries is for Meteor, because we want Meteor to do really good damage. You always want Shattered Stars, it just makes Meteor deal 30% increased damage or a whole bunch of meteorites fall around dealing basically 30% increased damage, and it applies a burn, so we get an additional X-Falls proc. This is mandatory for any meteor build. And then we go three curses, so meteors do 40% increased crit damage, but if the enemy's healthy, you do 80%. So this basically almost doubles the damage that meteor does against high health elites, and this by itself will make it to where Meteor can nearly one-shot most elites. If you again wanted X-Falls to be your main source of damage, you would just swap this to Shredding Blades, which is more damage for bosses, but again, I wanted Meteor to feel really powerful with this build, so this is why I went for three curses there. Obviously, you want Starfall Coronet. The build literally isn't going to work without Starfall, and like I mentioned, I go for Tabalt's Will, because it is just a damage increase to everything. If you want to play the Teleport version of the build, which I am going to play, which is my favorite version of the build. You want to put on Raiment, you put on Boots with uh, 
ranks to teleport and attacks reduce evade cooldown, and then you put on a damage reduction pair of pants with ranks to meteor. If you don't want to play with the Balt and you want a more survivability, you could go with a pair of pants like these, ranks to meteor, armor, some damage reduction stuff. Keep in mind that ranks to firewall isn't really going to help that much because your damage is not from firewall, it is from X-Falls and meteors. The firewall is just there to proc stuff. When it comes to the stats that you want on your gear, on your chest, you want armor percent, max HP, damage reduction, and damage reduction from burning. You do not want the intelligence. On your gloves, you want attack speed, crit chance, uh, intelligence and lucky hit chance again lucky hit is to get more lucky hit procs off of firewall meteor and your x-falls on your pants you want the bolts already mentioned if you wanted other pants on the boots you want su's heirloom for just that massive crit mana cost reduction movement speed and again permanent uh, movement speed whenever moving around and that converts to 33 percent crit which is really good for your weapon, you want a wand because it has lucky hit. You want int, all stats, and then you can get mastery skill damage, but that is not going to apply to your X-Falls. So ideally, you probably want uh, vulnerable damage and damage to close, but damage to burning is okay as well. On the offhand, you want to get a focus with intelligence, crit chance. You can get lucky hit chance or cooldown reduction. Both of those are good. All stats is also good. A resource generation and mana cost reduction isn't really necessary. Firewall is a pretty long animation and you're not really spamming it that much because you're procking it so much with your enchants. And using Tabalt's will by itself gives you a lot of mana or you can just use resource support instead. Again, we have Tarashas and X-Falls. And then on the amulet, there's a lot of stuff that you can get. I want total armor percent so that I can be armor capped because I am using disobedience. So you need two armor rolls plus disobedience to be armor capped in tier 100s at 13,000. I don't have that in the build, still feels fine, but ideally you would want that. You want uh, ranks to mastery skills to scale up your meteor damage, and then you want ranks to devouring blaze so that you do more crit damage. I went for intelligence percent because this just increases our damage overall, and then I also went for movement speed. You could go for cooldown reduction if you prefer. You could go for some damage reduction. The amulet is kind of just preference and really what you're able to get your hands on. Ideally, I'd probably, instead of having the intelligence here, go for armor percent. You don't necessarily need movement speed on the amulet, though, because if you're permanently pressing spacebar, you will be uh, movement speed capped just by pressing spacebar with Esu's heirloom. So getting the movement speed on the amulet is kind of redundant. When it comes to the paragon board, this paragon board kind of looks like crap, but I've done a crazy amount of math testing like 20 different paragon boards going 8 glyph, 7 glyph, 6 glyph swapping around the glyphs, losing additive nodes. This ends up being kind of better in a really weird way. Getting a lot of additive damage just ends up being particularly good. Adept is pretty good. You could decide to not max this out because it only is scaling a meteor and not your other skill, uh, not X-Falls, but I like to max it out and this helps with maxing out our resistances pretty easily. Go into destruction here for massive crit damage and then I go into burning instinct. Firewall isn't doing that much damage, but it's really free to get burning instinct here because you want this damage reduction from burning anyways, and it really, like, you could l gain one glyph by losing all these points here, but the one glyph you gain is barely better than just grabbing, like, the damage for free, some damage reduction, and some extra damage. Then I go into the Searing Heat Board, which is just crit chance for our Meteor, and increases the damage of our Meteor, which is also pretty free. Get some fire damage here as well, and some damage reduction from burning enemies and then I slot in Flame Feeder. Then we go into Enchant Master to get reinforced to buff our non-fizz damage, and it helps with our resistances, also get 15% DR, and then we buff some non-fizz damage here, which also gives us some max HP, which is really nice, and because we got all that non-fizz damage, our Frigid Fate is up to a 22% increase, and then we go for Control in the last Glyph. This last Glyph is interchangeable with pretty much anything. Uh, exploit you swap to for bosses, and if you want more survivability, you swap to Territorial. I like control for just nuking elites, but it really isn't necessary. You're not stunning enemies all that often, but like I said, my preferred way to play with the build is with uh, the teleport enchant, which I will now show you guys gameplay of. Right, I'll quickly show you guys some gameplay. I'll go into the teleport version after this one, which overall I think the teleport version is better. Real quickly, just explain some gameplay tips for you guys, and then I'll just show you guys some gameplay. This is the only one I had that doesn't have death pulse. Death pulse is very miserable on this build because uh, you can't see them, and Death Pulse is just annoying as is, so I guess I'm doing a 92, but basically the same thing. Some stuff to keep in mind is you want to evade on cooldown for the additional crit chance, and keep in mind that you can uh, animation cancel your firewall by pressing firewall and then pressing evade. So basically you want to evade every 3 seconds for that movement speed. Teleport on cooldown, so you get the Tabalt's will damage increase. Flame Shield anytime you're scared. Meteor anytime you see a big pack of elites or you just want to press it. My Meteor cooldown is pretty low, so I can kind of spam it. 
Lightning Spear, anytime I see an elite, make them vulnerable and uh, stun them. Ice Blades is just for Talrasha, so use it whenever. And Firewall, you kind of just want to plop down all the time. Enemies are pretty much permanently going to be kited into your Firewall. And if one Firewall gets on an enemy, they will die because it lasts for 8 seconds. Over that course of 8 seconds, they're pretty much guaranteed to uh, get an X-Falls proc. And probably have a Meteor proc on them or something to that effect. Just keep in mind that if you don't have the armor on your amulet, you will feel a little bit squishy. So I'm just going to go through and just show you guys kind of how it plays. It is a little bit slower playing this version of the build than Teleport. And in a weird way, Teleport feels safer as well. Even though I technically have less damage reduction, because I'm permanently just stunning everything, I kind of prefer the Teleport version. But as you can see, stuff kind of just dies. And a lot of people complain about like, you know, what's the point of killing stuff if enemies are behind you and you're not going to loot them. Like, in vaults, ideally you want to just run to the end and then loot stuff at the end, right? The reason that you still want to kill stuff is because if you don't kill stuff, uh, it will just kill you, and that's not fun, right? But it's kind of free to just be plopping down the uh, firewalls while you're just running. As you can see, once the meteors actually fall down, everything kind of just dies. I think I prefer playing with the meteors landing faster, but again, I just want the bigger numbers. But I'll probably play with the meteors landing faster, it just feels a little bit safer. But the immobilize is particularly nice for just getting some big numby. Get some stacks, and then we kind of just run around. As you can see, Firewall will proc itself a lot of the time when you use a Meteor, because Meteor's Lucky Hit is pretty good, so you'll oftentimes proc a Firewall off of a Meteor. But I really don't even look at the enemies that I'm fighting most of the time. I kind of just plop down Firewalls, and I just keep running. Uh, you can keep in mind that if you put the Firewall perpendicular to you, it'll kind of go in a straight line, and then that means the enemies are kited more into it. But your Firewall doesn't really do the damage as long as the enemies just walk into the Firewall for one second they will die to an X-Falls. And as you can see, that stuff just gets instantly nuked. And anytime you're scared, you feel like you don't have your disobedience stacked up, you could just uh, pop down a, a flame shield. I got a treasure goblin, which means I might get a butcher. This build isn't great at killing butcher. Like, you can do it. It'll just be kind of slow. Like, it's not, it's not blizzard, right? Blizzard will just nuke butcher pretty easily. But yeah, I mean, as you can see, stuff kind of just dies pretty quickly. It's real easy. Here, I don't have disobedience stacked up but I should be able to... I should be fine. The enemies kind of spawn and staggered in a little weird way. I think my Meteor just straight up missed on both of these guys and x falls in proc, so that was pretty miserable, but, I mean, still gets the job done just fine. Then we'll go into the last room. The last room you kind of want to play a little particularly. Like, you could just sit in the middle and probably be fine, but what I like to do to make it, like, go a lot faster is kind of kite around in a circle, and I'll show you guys how I do that. Otherwise, you kind of just want to run to the end of the dungeon. I mean, most of the loot is at the end, so there isn't really... It's not, oh, a son of Malphus? Yeah, I'm sorry. I, w I would show you guys that, but I would just die. <laughs> There's no point. Like, this build is pretty good at clearing, but you are not going to kill a son of Malphus. It just isn't going to happen. You just don't have enough boss damage. And I don't have the armor to survive that guy right now. You could sit in the middle of the room if you want to, just to make it look nicer. But ultimately, what I like to do is just plop down firewalls and kind of just rotate around in circles. Make sure to be using all of your cool, your skills on cooldown so that you permanently have barriers up and you have the damage increase from uh, to vaults there. But as long as you just walk around in circles, your firewalls will be proccing meteors, meteors will be proccing firewalls, and stuff will kind of just die to uh, your meteor presses or to your X walls. Pretty simple. Again, you could sit in the middle if you want, but it, there's so many on death explosions that you literally just can't see. Okay, like that. Okay, that, that was just me being a noob. I literally cleared it, and then I I thought that it was gone. But, you know, that's what happens when you play with Firewall. There's a bunch of on-death crap all over the place. But no biggie, we finished it, whatever. Now I'm going to show you guys the Teleport version. Alright, so if I want to swap to Teleport, all I do is I take Meteor Enchant off, because it has a pretty low proc chance anyways, and I want my Teleport to be proccing Firewalls. And then I put on my Boots, which are Attack to Reduce Evade Cooldown, and you want Ghost Walker, so that you can walk through the enemies. And then I take off the bolts and I put on a raiment and then I put on a defensive pair of pants. My defense with this version of the build is way worse than it should be, but I kind of feel tankier with this build because I'm permanently spamming um, teleport, which is permanently stunning everything via raiment. So I really like that. Unfortunately, I'm missing ranks of teleport. My cooldown could be significantly lower and I could get cooldown reduction on amulet and stuff and you could get about a four second teleport. That would be ideal, but I'm just going to show you guys this i think this is kind of easier to play with to be honest with you guys because you can just spam teleport and everything gets permanently stunned which is just really really nice like every time that i swap to teleport enchant i for i remember how insanely good i think it is and i'm pretty sure any build that can play it 
should always just play teleport enchant. That's that's my personal preference because you kill stuff faster because every look at look <laughs> look at everything just get grouped up there. It's like really it synergizes super well with meteor. You're just permanently spamming. And here, I forgot to put on resource support. And you always have the damage reduction from uh, just pressing teleport, right? But it also is just way faster for movement. Overall, I'm just a huge fan of it. Uh, let me put on resource support, though, because the mana without Tabalt is pretty rough. So I take breaking off. Put on resource. There we go. Plop down my Ice Blade so it gives me that Tarasha stack. And now I'm just going to run through. Use my Flame Shield there so I don't get one shot when my Disobedience isn't stacked. And now I'm just going to W key through the map. Flame, sh flame Wall is pretty good for giving you uh, attacks reduce evade cooldown, so you can pretty much just aim your teleport pretty often. And there usually there's just a lot of enemies burning right behind you. But everything is kind of just instantly dying right now. Not entirely sure why. I didn't, I didn't actually check the affixes. Yeah, I guess the affixes are fine. Stuff is just instantly dying, so I can't even like get the value of um, Firewall permanently burning stuff behind me to give me the infinite kind of teleport reset because it it uh, resets based on um, every single burn tick so enemies burning behind me will reset the cooldown on my teleport enchant there so it kind of works in a really good way for firewall when you're just killing stuff behind you uh, you're not going to be looting the mobs behind you but that's fine because we just want to get to the end room i mean you see how ridiculously fast that was and in a weird way it's also better for the end room because every time the mobs kind of spawn spread out and because of the way X Falls works and Meteor works, you kind of want to suck all the enemies inward and then just one-shot them after you do that. You're also permanently getting the damage reduction, and because the enemies do a lot of on-death effects, uh, affects, you can kind of suck them together and then kill them and then just walk away from the on-death affects. Why am I calling it affects? I'm like, I'm thinking of on-death affixes from WoW, so I'm like having a brain aneurysm trying to explain that. As you can see, I think that was overall better. I think in pretty much every conceivable way that was better. It's just you you don't get a benefit in doing bosses, but I much prefer this version of the build, and I would highly recommend it to most people. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the video. If you enjoyed, please make sure to drop a like, subscribe, blah, 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 and I will see you guys later. Peace.